And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Quick and Merry week number one of the Crochet Mystery. Today we're going to be doing part of the mystery and then next week you'll join me back here again and we'll complete this mystery together. So this is what we're going to be working on. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So this is a 48 inch diameter afghan and this is more meant for home decor for your holiday gift giving. It could also be done as a cute little toddler little blanket as well. It's big enough for that. So it's really kind of a neat idea and it's using the art form of tapestry crochet where we hide one yarn strand use the other and then keep switching it back and forth. It's really quite an easy design and this is called the peppermint pinwheel afghan. Now the nice thing about this particular afghan is that you can make it bigger. So 48 inches isn't gonna do it for you. you can also do a much bigger uh, design. The way that I've designed it, it will continually grow and stay flat just like this. So you're gonna be using a six millimeter size J crochet hook and in order to play for this particular pattern that we're working on, you only need two balls of Karen one pound yarn. There's so much yarn on those things that you only need one ball of one color and one ball of another. But if you want to change the design to make it bigger, then you'll obviously have to get more yarn because I've designed it so that you don't run out of yarn. So I'm gonna be giving some options. Let's talk about that quick. So in today's video I'm going to be giving you some options. This will not be written anywhere so unless you're watching this video you won't even know about it. So you see how that I have a solid color right in the center. If that bothers you I'm going to be showing you how to do this but I'm gonna also show you how to make it so that you can transition the color so it, it starts right from the middle. So this purple can go right to the middle like so. So I'm gonna have two starts to show you how to do this one and then I'll show you how this one. This one's a little more fiddly. It's harder to describe so I'm gonna just show it to you on camera and you won't use any less yarn really as a result of doing that. So it's only like one extra stitch. Um, it's like six extra stitches of the purple in order to make that out. So we're gonna be doing that. We're also going to be giving you an option here is if you would like to have the spiral completely go out without changing. So I have it changing every three rows. If you want the spiral to go all the way out just like so, you just have to do 28 rows right from the start one here. So to conclude this one and go out 28 rows all together and then you will then stay in line with this pattern. So I'm going to be teaching it with the tapestry crochet in the sense of changing these colors strategically as you see it. Now if you're doing the tapestry crochet there is nine groups of these colors. So for example this is one group. Okay. This is number two. Okay. And then number three <laughs> and etc. So there's a total group of nine of those that go all the way out and then that's gonna be the end of week number one. So for those that think that know what they're doing, you can fast forward now and go to this set of instructions as we begin. For those that would like tips on tapestry crochet on how to manipulate the yarn and things to look for, then just stay tuned and we're gonna cover that next. But everybody else that knows what they're doing, they can just fast forward now and then we'll start then at that time. So let's begin talking about the tips of using tapestry crochet. So tapestry crochet is the art of carrying one yarn. So I call it the travel yarn and so for example when we're using the purple here the pink is underneath just traveling underneath the stitches. It's not directly behind the project. It's right underneath the stitch right here. So what we have to do is that we have to then switch out those yarns every time that we want to change the color. So as we finish off the, the purple then we drop the purple then add the pink and then we do the pink and then etc. So it's the art of just manipulating this. So the neat thing about it is that you can actually see if you have the colors here you can actually see it carrying up underneath. The back of a project on something like this looks completely different. You can actually see that this is just a tail end that's hanging but you can actually see it more on the back side of the where it's carrying. So you can see it's not behind the project. It's right underneath the stitches like so. So it's one of those projects that it's more of a one-sided item when you're being able to go. So we're using two different color colors of yarn. So how do you prevent tangling? We'll talk about that next. So we have two strands of yarn that we're gonna be playing with and the trick is is that you don't wanna tangle yourself so that they end up becoming all twisted and all like this. There's actually a really quick simple solution to this. I kind of finally figured it out after all these years. So what I realized is that if I put one yarn ball straight ahead of me, probably about look where I am, okay, and I put it there. Okay, just right up. I may put it on a coffee table or I may put it on an ottoman, footstool, etc. and I'll put the first ball there. Then what I'll do, the second color I will put here. 
okay, right beside me on this side. So when it's coming to the hands, you'll notice that the yarn strands when they're coming, so if the purple is up over there right now, so if the purple is up like so, the purple will be coming from this direction, okay, and the pink will then be coming from this direction. So whenever I need to switch the yarns out, all I just need to do is just completely drop the work, grab the yarn strand I want and then continue. If they're coming from the exact same spot, it is so difficult. It is a pain. So think about where you want to position yourself and where your yarn is gonna go and this will make your life so much easier and you'll be able to get this done much faster too without all the fuss. So another thing to consider is counting. Oh my goodness, do you not wanna count or do you not wanna count? Don't worry about it. it. This is why I designed this. This is so awesome. So there's 12 pieces to the pie. So let's have an apple pie here and we can see that there's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So what we have here is that there's 12 pieces of pie and because of there's 12 pieces of pie is that we can grow it out incrementally. It's no different than a hat or anything like that that's round. So what I did is that every time there's a color change it's whenever you're starting the next piece of the pie. So when you're growing things out usually it's in sets of maybe six or it could be eight but in this case it's 12. So because there's 12 sections here that help it to grow the first stitch of the new uh, slice of pie will always have two in the beginning and then the next ones are all single. So there's two in the beginning and then the next ones are signal are single. So as you grow this out even bigger, see the first one is always gonna have two whenever you have this and then the rest are all single until you get to the next group over here and then the first one's two again and the next ones are all single and you will do that continually all the way out until you get to your nine um, cha uh, changes. So there's be, remember these are one, two, three, four and I'm coming off camera now. So there will be all the way to nine. So there's three rounds that make up one group. Okay, and there will be nine groups of that by the time you get there in the end of week number one. So really you're not having to count. You just have to look to, and every time you're going to switch the colors that the first one will always have two into the beginning. So later on in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to do this but what I wanna show it to you and I've already actually filmed this already once before yesterday but I'm refilming again today because what was happening is that because I've become so used to it I, I'm naturally bearing the yarn in behind without actually showing you. So I'm just going to begin another new round and the first one because it's in the first section will always have two into the first one. And see I'm not even telling you. See, see this is the travel string. The travel string stays right up underneath the project like up underneath the stitches. So you when you go to wrap you're going to go into the stitch but you're gonna let the travel yarn just stay on top of the hook and when you go and pull it through it traps it underneath just like so and then you pull through and finish. Now as I go along see it's just resting. So it's my travel yarn is just resting as I go. So I just wanna keep on going. So here's the thing. When I am doing this off camera without anybody looking at me, I just naturally kinda just rest the yarn in behind the work without even looking at it. So see it's kinda just sitting there but I'm not really paying attention. I'm just going right up over top of it. So because I'm in a longer section right now of bearing this yarn is that it can create um, this travel yarn to be loose. And that's because you're kind of manipulating everything, right? So every now and then and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pinch here and watch. Look at the difference. So what you wanna do is that you want to continually just once in a while just I uh, give it a tug and what I've been doing is that I usually tug halfway th across and then I tug again when I get all the way and uh, like all the way through a section just like this. So you can see I'm just kind of having this other yarn just kind of coming up from the the base of my hand just like so and it's just resting into position as I go across. So you can see there's not a lot of thought process to like you know having to reposition it every time you're doing a stitch. It's basically holding into position and then every now and then. So let's give it a tug again and look how it looks on the back. Okay. So you don't really see, see you kind of see it that the stitches are kind of coming out. So watch as I tug on the back side like the back. So here we go. See? It just makes it nice and snug and then I continue along. So I don't easily turn it over like that to take a look at that. As I do it I'm just doing it for you. So what we have to do is that tapestry crochet is always about the next stitch when it comes to changing. So let me show you how to change. 
So I'm about to come to a next section. So tapestry crochet is always thinking about the stitch ahead. Is this stitch ahead ready to change yes or no? So I'm still in the in this color here. I still want to make it opposite. I'm changing the colors out now. I've done my three rounds of this and now I'm switching back to purple. So what I have to do is that I have to look at what's underneath and determine when it's gonna switch. So you can tell that it's gonna switch in the first one of this purple color back to pink. So what I have to do is that in tapestry crochet I have to think about the stitch ahead. So I know that this is my last stitch of using this purple before I switch to pink. So watch how you have to do this. So because you have to think ahead you have to finish this stitch like you're thinking ahead. So you're gonna wrap the hook and then going into the stitch pull through, pull through two and hold it. This is just like changing a color midway through a row with, when you or when you're running out of yarn too. It's the same process. So you're gonna just let the yarn go and because the other yarn is positioned be, uh, to, to my side, see, if they were coming from the same spot it's so much harder but because it's coming from beside me the other one I just, just pick it up and grab it and then I finish it. Remember that with crochet the last pull through of a stitch is always the top of the next. So the top of this stitch here was originated here. So you gotta think ahead, right? So now I'm ready with the pink. So as I do the pink, I just lay down the purple on top of the line and then I just crochet right over top of it and because it's a new section there will be two into this position because I'm growing it to be bigger. So you can go as big as you need to go for these particular afghans as long as the first section of each section has two. And so now you can see that the purples pull through. So what happens is sometimes you can be a little bit loose so you can just pull on that and it will just strengthen that last purple there and then you just carry on. So you always have to think about the stitch ahead when it comes to tapestry crochet in this format and then you just carry on with what you know. So what I like to do is that because this ball of the purple is in front of me, what I like to do is that I like to pull this yarn. So I give it a little bit of slack so it's just in front. So I can just rest it on top of the project and just bury it in as I go as a travel yarn. And you will get your own rhythm on how you think it should go and all of that jazz as you're, you're working across. So this is kind of how you complete tapestry crochet. And so if you're thinking ahead and then again just tug it once in a while just to get rid of the slack and then you're good to go. So on camera is a stitch diagram. This particular diagram does not go with this particular afghan. It's very very similar to it. Just ignore the single crochets that you see here. This is for another project I've done. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start off with a solid color but I am gonna give you an option to change the color every other one to get that spot to go all the way to the center like to get these all the way to the center if you wish. And then what we're going to do is that we build out. So you can see that each section when you go to start it always has two double crochets in the very big one. So when you're reading this you go in a counterclockwise position. So when we get the first one we're gonna just uh, chain three and then double crochet eleven more times because the chain three counts as twelve. And then you just use the same color chain up three which counts as a double crochet and double crochet back into there. But we have to think ahead because we are, the next one will be a new color. And then we have to think ahead because the next one is this color coming back into play. And then we then bring up the other color. So in the very beginning of tapestry crochet in the center it's a little bit fiddly because you're switching out your yarns but as your project gets larger and larger what happens is that it gets further and further so the changes are not so frequent so it's not such a pain. So it's actually really quite an easy way to do to do it and as I've highlighted here every three rows is it is a color. So when you get these three done then it will be uh, purple back on top of here and then etc. So I'm going to give you an option. In this particular project you can either do just like you see here as per the written instruction or you won't use any extra yarn at all if you want to keep the pinwheel going all the way out to row number 20 or round number 28. So stop at round 28 if you want a solid pinwheel and if you want to break it up and really have like something really quite cool then you'll just continue along and you'll have nine sets. So this here of the pink the three is considered one set. These three are a set so this is one and two and then you keep on going out like that until you hit number nine. So let me show you another picture. So here's the picture of the original. We're gonna start off just like so. So when I say I need you to get nine sets done, remember that each set is made up of three rounds. So you can see that here. So this is one 
and this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then that's where you stop then and meet me on week number two. So without further ado, we're gonna use a J size six millimeter crochet hook and carry one pound yarn today. And then we're gonna get started and we'll take our time and then we'll let you be. So let's get started. Today we're going to use Karen one pound six millimeter size crochet hook. I'm going to show you two ways to get started. We're gonna do the way that it's shown in the pattern and then I'm gonna give you an alternate and you can choose which one you like the best. So to start the first one you're going to create a slip knot just like this and you're gonna insert your hook. This is classified as an intermediate pattern but you know it's just because you're switching out your yarns that makes it that it's really not that hard. So we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and insert the hook into the beginning chain to form a ring and then just yarn over and pull through and you have the center ring of your entire project. It's easier if the first round that we're about to do is a solid color but easier is not always more fabulous. So to begin round number one you just chain three. So one, two and three and go all the way around with the same color. Use this strand now to trap it around the ring as you go right up over top of it. It's very much like tapestry but really not. And we're going to uh, double crochet 11 more times. So with the chaining three and 11 double crochets that gives you a total of 12. So it's so important to get your numbers off and start it right away. And so we're gonna just do that all the way around. So in round number one it's just a solid color and then we begin using the secondary color then in round number two as we go all the way around. So let's count our rounds. So let's count our posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you're running out of space just it's around the ring so just move, move space over and this is 10. 11 and 12 and that was including that that round that chain three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Once satisfied then just join it to the beginning top of chain three and pull through to finish and that is round number one. So now I'm gonna show you an alternative just in case you would like to have the uh, middle also align with the rest of the afghan. That's completely up to you. So the alternative starting is having both of your strands ready at the same time. So just for kicks I'll start off with pink this time. And we're going to start off with the slip knot. This is not written in the pattern. This is something here in video format. You'll only know about this in video format unless somebody says something to you socially in our networks. So we're going to then chain th uh, four. So one, two, three, and four. So we can use the same color to do the chain and then we insert into the beginning one just like this and we are going to just pull through and you'll have your, your main center ring and again we want the straggler to go around the outside of the ring to make it easier. So now this is gonna get a little bit, uh, <laughs> it's gonna get a little complicated but if you're up for the challenge this is the whole point of the mystery. So putting down my project for a second I'm just gonna create a slip knot for my own self and it's just easier. So remember what I talked about in the beginning of this is that whenever you do tapestry the last part of a stitch is the roof or the is the top of the next. So in this case what we want to do is that we want to chain a total of, of two. So one and two but stop for a second and get that other chain here and put or that other strand here and pull it through. So this is the roof this purple one is the roof of your next stitch and that's what exactly you need. So what I need you to do is that the purple now is gonna be the next stitch in. So the first one that's a double crochet is a chain three. It's the same thing and what we're going to do is that we're gonna drop all the strands into position around the ring and let's just put it down like so and go into the center and pull through and two and you, you gotta just hold. So let's pull all of our strands nice and tight just like that and then what you have to just do is then just grab your pink and finish it. So this is why it takes a little bit longer to do the center. So let's do the pink now. We've dropped everything back down so in behind everything's underneath. 
So we're gonna just wrap the hook going into the center with the pink and we're gonna pull through. It gets easier, just trust me, it's just this is why I never designed it this way. So pull through two and you're gonna drop that and grab the purple and finish it. So how many of these do you think you gotta do? You gotta do a total of 12. So you have one, two, and three so far. So now that you kinda got everything more stabilized in your hand, you can kinda look at it. So remember tapestry crochet is always the thinking about the stitch ahead. So this here is the top of the next stitch when I go to finish it. So I use the, the pink and then I drop it. And then bring up the purple and finish it. See that? So it lines all the way to the top. So we just gotta keep an eye and make sure everything stays nice and balanced as you go. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna switch. So this is an alternative starting. If I really had my way, I'd probably start this way to be honest with you. I think it might look better is if it goes right to the center and it's always thinking about how to do it. So I kind of had an issue about how to write the pattern like that. It's kind of why I never designed it that way but really once you see it, it's really not that big a deal. And we keep switching the yarns. Isn't that neat? So the idea is to keep yourself organized and if your balls are in the right place, you should just be able to drop the yarn and pick up the other one without it tangling too much. So I'm looking, see the other one, the, the purple is coming from the top, this one's coming from behind me from the floor. And the trick is to make sure you keep bearing those unused yarn. So you want a total of 12 posts going all the way around. Let's just count. So we got a, a pink. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I got one more to go. One more to go. So that was 11 and 12 and then you know what that makes sense because the first one was actual pink so the last one should be there. So here's the trick. So we're now at the top and we got this going because we're gonna join it. Here's the thing. You need to move this other traveling yarn up at the same time too. So when you go to slip stitch it, normally you go to the top of the chain three which is good but you have to get this other strand up there too and just put it and so that it's sitting on top and when you go to slip stitch it, it's on top and coming out at the same spot so that it's ready for you to go next time. So this is how you do the first round. It's a little more complicated but it looks just as good. So let's move up to round number two. For those that are just joining us and did not want to do the alternative round, this is what you're seeing is the alternative round of other, every other post changing color. So in round number two, there, it's just like I showed you before. We're just gonna get that yarn strand up so that we can see it. Okay, we're gonna start off with the pink and we are going to then just chain up three which counts as a double crochet and in the same stitch of the join, you want to double crochet again. Make sure that this purple is resting on top of that and getting into position. But wait, this round here, there's gonna be two stitches in each one and they have to match the color that's in there. So I cannot finish using this pink. I have to drop it, okay, and then pick up my purple to finish it. And then the next two in the purple here are going to still be purple. Okay, so you get two in there but wait, you can't finish that one because the next one is gonna be pink. So you just pick it up and drop the purple on top of the row and you can't finish the last one. So it's just a matter of remembering that the last stitch you can never finish all the way because it has to be prepared for the next. Do you see that? So what I want you to do is that I want you to complete this con entire round. There's two stitches in every stitch that are the same color of the stitch underneath. So please do that all the way around for round number two. So I'm coming up all the way around and I have to do my last one. Now I can tell there's a last one because every other section should be a different color, right? So you can see I still have a purple left down here. So I'm just gonna finish off with my purple and I have to think about how I'm finishing the round. Don't forget about that. So this here is about to join here. The problem is is that I need this color to be ready for me right off the hop. So I have to drop this yarn and I have to finish it with the pink so it's ready. And now I'm going to lay this strand 
as a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So I capture that so I can just drag it up one more level with me behind the work. Okay, so everything's in position and behind. So now I'm ready to start round number three. So for those that have did the alternative round, I don't want you to include that as that group of three. So ignore this one. So we have to do two more rounds like this and then we're gonna switch and make the colors opposite. So this is group number one as you're going uh, making this project. So we're just gonna start in chain three and this purple is now in the proper position to continue to travel it. The first one will always get two whenever you're starting a new section like this. So every like even when purple is new section, new section, new section all the way around. And so then the next one is purple or sorry pink and that's it. You run out of pink. You can see the next stitch is a purple. So drop it and finish it with purple and the first stitch is going to be two purples. So you can see as this gets bigger you don't have to switch the yarn as often. And that's really what people get all uptight about when it comes to tapestry. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that and getting it ready for the next section. So the next section is pink. So there's gonna be two in that one as two as well. And in behind, see how I just naturally just doing it um, without saying much? It's just traveling within my fingertips in behind and I'm trapping it into position as I go. So this is kind of my, my second time trying to do this video and the reason for it is that when I was doing it the first time I wasn't explaining that it's just sitting behind because it looked like I was just dropping it completely. But it's actually just in behind just resting on my fingertips just to make sure that I capture it. And you can see you can get in a habit. So it makes it a lot easier in the ball positions of where the yarn is coming from on how quick you can change your, your hands and the yarn. So this is gonna be round number three. I want you to do this same pattern going all the way around. Just continuing to add and drop your yarns as you go. So please do round number three. So I'm coming to the end of round number three. Purple is gonna finish this round. Remember the first section always will have two into the first one and then you carry on and make the rest of them just one double crochet by itself. Now we have to join it again. So we have to drop this yarn and get the pink ready for the third or uh, for the next round. So we're just going to pull it up like so, get it ready and we're going to lay this over top of here and then we're gonna slip stitch on the top of the beginning chain three with the pink to get it ready and the purple is now trapped in a position to be ready as well. So we're just joining a chain up three and then just double crochet into the same one that you did the join with. Keeping that pink or purple just on top and so the remaining then is just gonna be one double crochet by itself. So we can see that the next one is about to turn purple as we hit it. So we're gonna drop this one, bring up the purple, finish it and then just start the next section and there's always gonna be two in the beginning one and then the remaining is all gonna be purple as well. So this is it for the purple. As we finish off, drop it, get your pink back up and then use your pink and the first one has always got two. So please do this all the way around and so you can see that we are, uh, this is round number one. So this doesn't not count as part of that group of three. So we have, this is gonna be the final group of three and then we're gonna switch it and make the pink over top of the purple and purple over top of the pink the next way around. But as an alternative suggestion, I'm going to allow people that wanna do a full pinwheel all the way out if they don't wanna switch it like that and that's gonna be up to you and that will be here. Um, available and again you just follow the same concept if that's what you want and you just have to make sure that there's 28 rounds which includes the very beginning oops, uh, sorry which includes the very beginning in order to uh, be aligned with week number two. So let's uh, continue this round. I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm doing my last section here and it's really quite easy. So in this section here we're about to switch the positions of the colors for the next round. So here's your choice. If you would like just a regular pinwheel of no changes of colors then you just keep on going exactly. So if you wanna do that option then all you just have to do is just finish off here, get the pink ready, finish it and then just join it making sure you get that in position as well. Just join it and then you just carry on doing the pink. 
Okay, so that's not how the pattern is written but I'm gonna give that as an option if that's easier for you and etc. So then if you would like to change the colors just like it shows in the pattern which is more interesting to my point of view then you have to think about this last stitch more carefully. Let me go through that. So as we finish up the last round I wanna switch the colors this time so that my purples are on top of the pinks and the pinks then are on top of the purples. So look where I am right now. I got purples here. So what do you think I need to do in order to get purple to start here? I need to finish this section completely in purple. So I just finish off. I make this yarn come up as normal and I just join it with purple and then purple is now ready to go to stand on top of the pink. So then you just chain three like so and then you're just coming in and then putting your, your second one in there and then you just carry on then and your purples are now gonna be on top of your pinks. So you use the pinks as your guide for when your purples need to end. So this is the last time that the pink is before it switches to purple. So I wanna drop this yarn, bring up my pink to get it ready and then the first section of purple will now be pink. Just like that. <laughs> if I wouldn't drop my stitches it would be easier. So again this is kinda how you do it. So you're switching out the colors and then making sure each one of the beginnings always has two in there in order to begin. So you'll do then three rounds that look like this and then you'll switch it back to like the pink on top of the purple again and then you keep doing that and there should be nine sets of that. There will be a total of 28 rounds. So let me take you back to a photograph. I wanna show you one more thing and then I'm gonna leave you to do your homework and then we'll be back next week in order to complete. So when we go back to the pattern you're going to notice that it has a curvature look and you're looking at the pattern where you are right now and you're thinking you don't have that. You will have it. It's just not happening yet. It's just a little too early. So what happens is that because you're putting two double crochets every time in the first section of each one of these sections you're growing it out and it's kinda like going, wanting to lean outward. So as this gets bigger you're going to notice that this pinwheel is going to start leaning out just like this and it's the double crochets that start around in order to make that happen. So when we see it here, okay, you see that it's starting here and it's starting to curve outward like there and it's the double crochets that create that motion in order to happen. So what I want you to do now is I want you to get your homework done. Get me nine sets of these colors here or 28 rows if you're gonna do a solid pinwheel and see me back here next week and we'll complete the quick and merry crochet afghan with you. Till next time. Hey and welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. We're going to do the quick and merry crochet along together and today is part two and the final part as we continue our mystery together and we're going to just finish off the final stages of this which includes a few more revolutions of what we already know and then we're going to include a border. So let me tell you a little bit about this and we're also doing some giveaways. I'm going to talk about that in a second too. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So continuing along in our pattern right now we're at the end of this red strip right here or the pink strip and what we're going to do is that we're gonna continue just a few more revolutions of what we already know and then you're gonna move to the border. So we're gonna have some giveaways as well for this and the giveaways are about this size. So you have to, in order to qualify, you have to make it a minimum of what you see but you of course can make it much bigger and I'm gonna tell you some tips to making it bigger as well. So you're gonna see that the next section that we're gonna do is only gonna be two rounds of the same and then we switch off to a solid green. So if you wanna make it bigger you can go as big as you wanna go. The way that I did the math is that the final border is in sets of four and because it's increasing by uh, 12 stitches every revolution you'll always be in an increment of four. So you can go as big or as little as you want to.
So at the time of filming this is already in progress and I have to tell you I am so blown away by the amount of options that people decided to do. Some people did solid pinwheels going out. Some people changed the increments of where it changed colors. You can do that as well and it was just really awesome. The only thing you cannot do is use a solid color for the whole thing because then it doesn't look like a pinwheel and then it really uh, defeats the purpose of learning how to do tapestry crochet. So it's really neat. I have to tell you though the Karen cakes the, and, the, and the Bernat pop that people are using instead what they're doing is that they're just using the same color and then it's transitioning. I will put a, a, a picture right now on screen with you and it looks absolutely amazing when you let the yarn change on its own too. I'm just blown away. So this is a really cool option. So let's uh, get started and getting this mystery all solved and finished for you today. So as mentioned you're at the end of this section right here. It's the pink section. We're gonna do two more rounds of what we already know and let's get started in doing that and then we're gonna do one, two, three and four of just solid color and then we're gonna do one more of the pink and then we're going to then do the border after that. So it's really quite simple. We're almost done and let's get this thing done. So currently my project right now is in round number 28 exactly where I should be and I'm just going to switch the colors one more time and do two rows on, or two rounds only of this switch. So we're just gonna do two rounds of what we already know and then what we're gonna do is then we're gonna eliminate one of the colors out and then we'll just do solid. So again like always the first one in each of the sections will have two and then it's just one into each after that. Um, people really got the hold of the, con or hold of the concept. I, th I don't even know how many people are participating. There's so many great ideas going on. So please do two more rounds of what you already know and then meet me back here and then we're gonna eliminate one color out and then do four rounds then of a solid color. So now I'm back and I'm just finishing up my final two rounds of doing the pinwheel. So I'm gonna give you some options if you would like to continue and some advice and I want you to have as much creativity as possible. So what I want to do is that I wanna stop here and let's talk about what we're gonna do next. So here are some options for you. So right now I have you stopping right now at the edge of this pink one here and now we have four rounds. One, two, three and four of this solid color. So this is kind of like the dominant color once you decide. So you have used both of your yarns equally at this time. So whatever color you decide to make this right now will be the dominant color of the whole thing. So if I'm doing this one here, if I do it pink of this, this will be the dominant and if I do this one, it'll be that one. Here's some options for you. If you would like to continue your pinwheel you have to consider what you're using for the border. So the border takes up more yarn. So if you were going to do your pinwheel you can continue to do it in sets of three. So there's one left here and then there's another four and then you can do your border and after that. So whatever your border color is you'll need an extra yarn for that in order to keep that color going. So that's completely up to you if you would like to do that. As you can see here you can do the green all the way around easily in order to finish it off. So it's more this color here that matches um, is that you need extra. So I'm gonna leave that for you on your creativity and what you wanna do but right now we're going to come back to the project and I'm gonna drop one of the colors and do my final four rounds of just doing solid and I'll show you some tips on that too. So I come to the end and I want to have the pink as my dominant color. So I'm going to finish this completely and I'm going to then just attach and my pink is ready to go next time around. So that means that my purple is done. So what I wanna do is that I wanna trim this yarn here and I want to bury that underneath the strands as they go but I'm completely done with my purple at this time and we'll bring back the purple then at the end of the project in order to do the border. So just like before, so here's the thing is that you could tell before every time you hit a peak, right? So let me just back out the camera for you there. You can tell when there's a peak, uh, like a section, right? So what you have to do is that you're still gonna do it the same way that you know, adding two into the beginning and then solid uh, like one in each and then turning. So what you have to do is that when you go forward now, when every time you see there's a double, the first one will always have two into it in order to maintain it, okay? So you're just not gonna see the color transitions anymore if you're doing it solid like I'm about to. So when I go to start I'm chaining three and I wanna bury it in this purple as I go to get that under the way and then one double crochet in each and then I'm gonna one double crochet in each of these and then two into the first one here. So the next time I come around on this project you're, it's all gonna be a solid pink so I'm just gonna look where the doubles are and the first one of each double will have two in order to continue to grow out. So I'm gonna have four rows of the solid color now and then we're gonna come back and then do two rows of the border at the end. So again it's up to you on how you wanna do it as far as keeping your pinwheels all the way to the border. I 
design this in a way that you can do that. You can make any size of this if you wish. It, it'll all balance out because it's always gonna be growing in multiples of um, 12 as you're continuing in each round and because I have done the, the final border in sets of four then that means that no matter what size that you do the border will always work out for you. So continue now four rows of solid color if you wish or just choose your own way that you're doing it and then I'll see you back here and we'll do the border together. Okay so now I'm back and I have my four rows. One, two, three and four of solid color in this area here you see it's more open. Again that was up to my, your own creativity if you wanted to keep your pinwheel going or not. So what you have to just do is then you just have to slip stitch to the final just like so. I just gotta tighten myself up a little bit, a little bit loose and just do that and then what we can just do is fasten this off. So I've already uh, trimmed my yarn so I'm just gonna pull through and I'm just gonna weave it through a few of this. If you wanna use a darning needle you can do so and I will be using a darning needle at the end of today's tutorial to hide in the final loose end so that you don't have it falling out afterward. So now the next two rounds, one round is exactly what you already know but it's now using the purple. So the, the border is kinda looking thick but it's actually two and I'm just gonna bring this back, let's create a slip knot, join it to the start. See how you had two into the same one as you're doing that. So you just join it to the first one of the two, join it with a slip stitch, chain up three and then double crochet into the same one to keep the growth and then one into each and I'm just burying in the loose end as I go just right underneath and you already know how to do that here in today's tutorial. So as I get to the next section here there will be two into the very first one. Just look where it's double. See where you have the two there and it will be the first one and then keep on going. So do this round exactly what you already know but using a new color so you can make a nice thick border. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm in the last one and I'm going to join. So for those that are gonna inquire because I know I'm gonna get a few emails on this is that no matter which round you finished on the border will always work. Because it was in multiples of 12, in 12 sections it's always divisible by four and I designed the border that can be done at any time within the project. So if you wanna, if you're not happy with the size and wanna make it bigger you can do so. You will not ruin the border. So let's begin final uh, round now. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet into the first one. So we're no longer gonna make any growth when you hit like a between two, play, uh, two pieces here. So then the next one is gonna be a double crochet into, the into that one and then a treble into the same one. Okay and this will give a, a, a opened up look and then in the next one you wanna do reverse of what you just did. So you wanna do a treble and then a double into the next one. So there's two stitches in each and then the next one is a single. So now you just get end up like a flower petal kind of idea. So let's review that again. So the next one is gonna be a single. Then the next one is a double to start followed by a treble into the same one and then the next one is a treble into the next one and followed by a double into the same one. So just remember that the two middle ones that make it up big are into the same one. So one, two here and two here and then single. Do you get it? So you end up with a really kind of a neat look like that. Okay so just review again. So single crochet then the next and then move on. The next one is a double treble. The next one is a treble double and then single crochet. So then the next one single crochet, double treble, treble uh, um, double and then single crochet. So when I said double treble don't make it a double treble. That's actually a stitch when I think about it. So let's do a double crochet and treble and then the next one is a treble and then a double crochet. So do that all the way around for your final border. I'll see you at the end of this to conclude. So now coming up to the end I have three stitches left. If you have four or two fake it or make it right. You're not gonna frog the whole thing at this point. Nobody in the right mind would. So just uh, do the last few stitches as you know it. So it's a, um, a double treble into the next one and then the next one after that is a treble and then a double to the next one and then the final one is a single and you're just going to join it to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this yarn and I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends. Now I've been taking care of my ends as I've been going along because there really hasn't been that many because you've been burying the yarn in the tapestry kind of concept anyway. 
So using a darning needle just feed your leftover yarn into the darning needle and what I want you to do is just glide this underneath. So don't go around the outside of the of the stitch work. So don't impede on the outside just go on the inside. Drag it through some fibers. So go one, just pull it snug and then go back in the other direction for two and then finally you're gonna do three. So that's all there is to this particular uh, blanket. It's really kind of a neat concept. I've designed this uh, for simplicity, for uh, easy success rate whether you liked it or not. That's up to you. So um, we have now giveaways and stuff and you have until uh, the date that is on screen the, uh, of August 18th uh, to be able to submit your Afghans to um, your inspirations through, uh, you can do it through Instagram or just update it to their website. If you go in the link in the more information of this video I'll post you a link there is also to submit. So now it's done, it's great and that's it. So until next time I will post a photo of the final photo. So this is my second one because the original one on the camera um, main bed was actually mine as well. So now I have two. So until next time have a great day. We'll see you again real soon and thanks for joining me on this mystery.